So do you know those stacks of paper that your kids bring home from school every day? Well, today we're going to tell you what to do with that. Hey everyone, it's Shelly from the Shelly Killinger Group. Today I am here with Sandra Lane, who is a certified professional organizer. She's also the founder of Organization Lane, which is your company, and she is um, an author. She has a book called Ask the Organizer, mm -hmm. um, which I am so excited to read, and she also is a, a speaker as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that resume is pretty extensive. Thank you yeah. so much for taking some time with us today. Sure, thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So, we are talking tackling the issue of what's in front of us. And I have to say this is probably a third of what my kids brought home in the last you right. know week. A lot of our audience is their moms mm -hmm. and they're really, you know, dealing with, you know, running the household and they're dealing with sometimes working on a side of the home and then their mm -hmm. kids have schedules and then all of this winds up on their dining room table at the end of the day. And so we want to give them some tips today for how to organize not only their kids' artwork but the paperwork that comes home as well from mm -hmm. school. So why is it that you feel like moms might have an issue kind of letting go of some of this stuff? Well, I think oftentimes in the beginning when kids start coming home with it at that preschool age, that's when it really comes in fast and furious, right. the artwork in particular. And then when they start moving into the lower elementary school, papers mm -hmm. come in. Um, they just don't know what to do with it. Right. There is no system in place to capture all of this stuff. Right. So it just starts to collect yes. on it's a dining room table. On the, or or any, any surface, let's be exactly. honest. If you looked around my home, you'd probably find a few. Exactly. Oh my yes. gosh. So I think solutions begin with creating that system. So when it comes to paper in general, mm -hmm. and kids are going to generate paper, you are going to need to keep track of everything that involves your kids. Right. So what I like to suggest is that you create a file folder for each one of your children. That yes. all starts with a hanging file folder. Mm -hmm. And this everybody. is for like the forms and the communications exactly. from school and things like that. Right. Yes. And then within that hanging file folder, you are going to have manila folders that are labeled for each child accordingly based on activities that they're involved in. Mm -hmm. Some of the basics, generally speaking, you'll have one for schoolwork, right. you'll have one for school, and that's the communication, one for physicals. Yeah. really like doing one for physicals because you'll even want to make copies of those so that you have extras of immunization records so when they're asked by any organization that they want to join or participate in a camp or a team right. you've got extras right on hand. Oh you that's don't a great idea. Have to My make kids an aren't that old yet so I'm not into it but right. that is genius yeah. absolutely. So, and then this changes over time based on the activities that they're involved in. This was my daughter she's volleyball scouts mm -hmm. etc. But that's the beginnings of how you do Paperwork. Right. Step one. <laughs> right. Artwork is a whole different animal altogether. Right. So, I mean, I feel as a mom, I, I sometimes have a hard time letting go of some of this stuff. Why do you feel like that is? Like, do we just think right. we're going to kill our children's childhood? No, 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 no. No. Well, I think there's a couple of things. I think that we feel that um, this is something that our child made and therefore it must be precious and important. Right. Therefore, we must save it. Right. But you don't have to be the only beneficiary of your child's masterpieces. Right? I love that. You can share all of this that comes home. Right. How about keeping the best of the best? And um, there's a few options here. You can create an art wall, as you've yeah. done in your own house. Yeah. I think that's beautiful what you've done. Yeah, I will show you guys the art wall. Right? You uh, can frame some pieces with, you know, really good framing, good matting, because it's going to probably stay up there for years. Right. You can um, share, put some of these pieces, the ones that maybe are not quite as important to right. you, that might not make it to the wall of fame, but put them in an envelope and send them to grandparents and mm -hmm. aunts, uncles, babysitters at college. They would love to receive. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You're totally right. They would. Right. And, um, you know, that's just the beginnings of, of, of what you could do with this. And, Absolutely. But there's, but there's certainly more. You can save as much as you like or as little as you like, but you certainly can share it as well. Absolutely. Well, and you were saying in terms of, 
you know, once we've decided we're going to pare down, we're going to toss some of the things you were saying, maybe something that's not as original, mm -hmm. like this little Moana piece that my daughter did, but it's just a coloring book page. We can toss that out. Right. But once you decide on what to keep, where do you keep them? Right. So you know? temporarily, I like using a large artist portfolio. You can find them in any craft store, Joann's or a Michael's. Okay. We'll sell them. They sell varying degrees of cost and quality. Um, but anything will work. They usually about right. this big, so, so they'll big hold to those, carry those big projects. Right, those big, large poster size pieces mm -hmm. will fit very nicely in there. The nice thing about it is because it's relatively flat mm -hmm. in size, you can slide it underneath a couch, yeah. you can put it behind a couch, so yeah. it doesn't really take up a lot of space if space is the, an issue in your home. Absolutely, which mm -hmm. I mean, since when is it not? You right. know, it always is. Right. That's genius. Mm -hmm. um, and then I love the idea, too, of maybe even bringing your kids in and helping them choose some of their favorites yeah. to send off to relatives or maybe to use as a special project or on an art wall. I mean, it kind of involves them a little bit, makes them feel kind of important that their artwork is going to be on the wall. Mm -hmm. I love that. Right. I love that. Yeah. So you also mentioned um, digitizing their artwork. Yes. So I'll share a, a story that, and this is how I knew that this digitizing was important because it was a story that really, you know, um, was close to me. Yeah. I was preserving all of my kids' artwork, um, being the good mom that I was, uh, in two separate folders, one mm -hmm. for each of my kids, mm -hmm. thinking that, I, I guess I was thinking that by the time they turned 21, they would love the idea that I saved all these art pieces for them, and they would right. love to look at them. But then what would happen to them after that? I, I didn't even have to go that far. Right. Somewhere around age 15, my, my kids are now 23 and 20, but my daughter was around age 15, I remember. I just happened to open up her art portfolio yeah. and noticed that some of the noodles on one of the art pieces was breaking off and uh, the paint was fading and cracking on others, yellowing of paper, and I thought, right. you know, this is not going to last no. much longer. And when I started pulling all these pieces together in this portfolio, mm -hmm. Digitizing and cameras, iPhones were not nearly as advanced as they are now. Right. So I right. didn't even have that as an option back then. What I wouldn't have even considered it. So it was at that time that I thought I need to capture these yes. the way they look now. So I just laid all the pieces out individually, yeah. did one child at a time, created two separate albums mm -hmm. in my phone, and then captured them. Yep. And then I just printed out books for each of them, I and they became Christmas them. presents oh, for each one so of them sweet. one year. And, and you're totally right. You could use this as like a coffee table book mm -hmm. or something to really right. honor them. Yes. You know? So um, one of the things that's really nice is that you can capture those pieces that are impossible to save in an artist's portfolio or yes. otherwise. This is my son's boxcar from Scouts. There's no way yeah. you're going to be able to keep it. Right, all of those. exactly. Yep. And then my daughter has got um, her Daisy and Girl Scout vests in here. I love that. I right? Never I've got all of her patches in there. All the patches. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's genius. Well, and then here's the 3D piece over here. Mm -hmm. This 3D piece would never have stood the test of time. Right. No, this is one of her, right. honestly, this is one of her most favorite pieces because this was displayed at the library locally where we live. Oh, so it was very gosh. important to her. Yes. Very so important to her. She can always remember it. You know, or you could even send this as a gift to somebody, mm -hmm. grandparents or babysitter, like you're saying. That right. would be kind of awesome. Yes. Well, and I just came across, you and I were chatting before we started filming, um, an app for your phone mm -hmm. called Archive, right. where you can snap pictures of your kids' artwork mm -hmm. and then send it off. It's almost like a Shutterfly kind of thing, where you can make keepsakes and books, and I think that's just genius. Right. They and do. then you they don't have to feel bad about yes. letting it go that's at right. that point. You well, know? and you know, that process of letting go is really up to the parent. Mm -hmm. uh, every parent will have their moment when they're ready to let go. Right. But the first step in really preserving your child's work, first and foremost, is to start digitizing right. and uh, when the pieces come home if there's something you know you want to save mm -hmm. for example if it's not um, doesn't have their name on it or there isn't a date on it just kind of put it back there in the corner put it in the artist portfolio right. so that way you've got some documentation on the age of your child Yes. That may be something that's important when you decide how to format your book. Absolutely. Perhaps you might want to do it chronologically, right. and that will make it a lot easier for you to do. That's a, 
genius tip because honestly, you know, it comes in every day from mm -hmm. school and you don't always have the time to deal with it right at that particular moment. So if you know, okay, this comes home, I'm gonna put all the forms and the paperwork in their folder, we're going to take all the artwork, mark it with the year in their name, and then put it in the portfolio if we're not displaying it. And then at the end of the year, or at the end of a couple years, mm -hmm. you can just kind of then tackle that project. Right. Make some choices at the end of the year is yes. a good time to do it. Yes, oh my gosh. Well, mm -hmm. this has been amazing to chat with you, Thank and it's you. gonna be, very helpful for our household, I have a feeling, and hopefully for the households of all of the people that watch. So. Um, thank you again for stopping by. I want to share with them, how do they find you? If they want to learn more about you, if they want to buy your book, you know, where should they go? Sure. So my website has all the information for my social media stops, um, organizationlane.com. You can find my book on Amazon. Ask the, organizer. Ask the Organizer is the name of the book. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank and guys, you. you might want to share this with a friend who has kids and a pile of artwork to go through. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.